so when a stimulus binds to the ligand on the membrane of the cell the on reactions start the, these on reactions are receptors and then the associated downstream molecules and then they are activated and what happens is here we can see that the resting cytosolic level of the calcium is only 100 nanomolar because if we have the high calcium the uh, the phosphates in the cell will precipitate out so it is very dangerous and then when the channels are open and there are the influx of the calcium from outside the cell or from the er then it maintains about 1000 nanomolar which is one micromolar micron molar and then it performs several functions in the time domain for example the exocytosis requires it happens very fast and it is in microsecond contraction of the muscle it is in millisecond metabolism second gene transcription in minutes and fertilization proliferation and hypertrophy it, it is in hours so then what happens is when the calcium enters the cells so all the uh, calcium binding proteins they just grab the calcium and then they store it in compartments and then the specific function of that uh, is performed in that compartment and it can it is if it is a longer event for example the cell proliferation where cell has to divide after 48 hours or 24 hours so that that is uh, that that calcium is hold and it is used so the next thing is the if you see now how the calcium signaling works so it works here we can see the agonist binds to the receptor and then the phospholipase c it gets activated and here the phosphatidyl uh, inositol pip2 actually converts converted into inositol phosphate 3 and diacyl cholesterol these two are the strong second messengers and this ip3 then travels through the cell goes to the er membrane binds to the inositol phosphate 3 receptor and then it makes the store calcium released into the cytoplasm which regulates several functions one function in non excitable cells these are the functions for example fertilization of the oocytes proliferation of the lymphocytes metabolism of liver cells and the secretion of pancreas and salivary glands and then it has a modulatory role which is that it activates several other functions in the excitable cells and basically there are three methods one is the agonist binds the ligand and then the calcium cascade is activated the second one is through receptor operated calcium entry where the agonist directly binds to the receptor opens it and there is a huge influx of the extracellular calcium here it was the er calcium store depletion but here it is the from the outside so agonist can work both ways and here the third one is which is in the excitable cells which is the voltage operated calcium entry where due to the depolarization of the membrane uh, the channel opens and the calcium enters and then this can this can activate to the rhinodine receptor also in the er and then there will be a efflux of the calcium in the cytoplasm and it regulates several functions in the excitable cells also which can lead to the uh, which are the neurons excitability uh, beta cell insulin secretion contraction and cardiac cell contraction but what happens is if there is a change in the transient which will we will see in the uh, in the following slides so when there is a change in this calcium regulation so then it causes several diseases for example the neurological diseases alzheimer bipolar and then diabetes and then cardiac disease etc so this is the calcium transient so now we understand we will talk about what is the on reaction and what is the off reaction so here when the channel opens and the er is depleted so on reactions are on so calcium entry or calcium release both are called as on reactions as we saw here so i'm talking about here the release from the from the er or entry from the receptor from outside the cell so this makes the on reaction